Hello, this is Pixie, doing another video. The thoughts are going on in my head. Um, Brexit's an odd one. There's lots of stuff going about rejecting a deal, and we shouldn't go with no deal, and we should have an extension. You don't need an extension. What you need to do is put the best deal on the table, right? So, so this, this deal, this is what we want. And uh, there's an ultimatum. So it's up for it's up to the MPs. If they're going to reject it, what were they proposing as an alternative? And and then let them argue it out. In business, I'd rather let the I'd rather let the competition fight amongst themselves because you're. Um, I mean, it is basically is a classic um, thing from the art of war. You know, we're wasting your resources. You, if, you, if you're dealing, if it's one of you and there's um, there's 20 or 30 of them, and some of them just want to take you down, they're going to just cause uh, disruption wherever they can. They've got a job to do, we're paying them to do a job. We've made a decision, right? If it doesn't work out, we can always review that in the future. You know, it's not a problem. It's like this is the way clubs should work. If it doesn't if it doesn't work out, and you'd like better off going with it, oh, you know, it's a bit like, I don't know, energy provider, right? You go have an energy provider, you're not happy with it, you switch over to another one, and then they all their tariffs, and you're not happy with that one, so you want to go back to the old one, that should be fine. There shouldn't be this funny, funny club, oh well, you broke the rules, you can't come back again, or any of that sort of stuff. So that's probably what you should do, you should vote to go out for a bit, and when and when it improves the EU, or they can tell us what they, they can offer us that sounds so wonderful that we want to come back to them, then we do. That's really how it should work. We've got to play hardball business. So I would say the ultimate is, the deal's on the table, if you can't come up with a new deal, this is the one we're going to go with. You don't really get a choice because we're the government and you'll you vote on things. But this is a, this is a, a decision made you know, above your level, and that, I think that's really what needs to be done. Because I think you can pull. I mean, if if you're in a position, a leadership position, you you can basically drill. You can sort of um, dig your heels in. That shouldn't be a problem to get a result. So yeah, absolutely. And um, what else do you think? So yeah, so I think that's important. I think that's because I think people are playing it off. They're creating havoc. The idea they think they're going to have another referendum and Labour getting voted in, and uh, Jeremy Corbyn only cares about himself, uh, which is quite of, which is quite obvious because of his comments and then the way it backslides. Like he calls someone a, a stupid woman or something, and then he claim that no, no, I was saying stupid people um, or something completely different, and it's because he's got a temper on him. Really, that's what it is. So when he's backed to a corner, he might make rash decisions, uh, and they're not really well thought out on the, on, you know, on the spot. So I think that's what I'd suggest for the, the Prime Minister, is that if we're not going to agree, we've got to agree to disagree. So, you know, they might say, well, we, you know, we don't, so they both, they both agree that they don't want a no deal. So what they're basically saying is that that A deal would have to go ahead, even if they weren't completely happy with it. And they could, based on the votes, you could figure out the one that's with the highest probability of success. Which, you know, so if there's some the eyes to the left and nose to the right, but they, if, if they kind of level off and there's, there's, a, there's a slim line between the two of them, then what's the problem? I do not want another referendum. I'm not going to get bullied by, by blooming um, business people that are involved in government you know, or the media, or anything like that. I just want a clear-cut improvement in the UK through pulling out. All this stuff, when you unify... So if you join, if you join forces, or you ally yourself with somebody and their agenda isn't 100% in favour of your own, you're forcing yourself to commit to something. We do not want the war with Russia. I don't have a problem with Russia. If they want to have a conversation with each other and spit out rhetoric that kind of rubs each other up a bit because it sells guns and increases the military um, spending budget and so on. But they're all run, they're all connected by the same sort of banks. There might be some divide in, in, in the um, Russia. They like to keep themselves to themselves or their own branch. But ultimately that's what it is. It's just world domination stuff. And um, and people on the people on the ground are just fed up with it to be honest. We just want to get on with business. So yeah, anyway, so that's, that's what I do. I probably write something to the Prime Minister and, and say that 
you know, based based on the professionalism of the um, of the MPs and the um, um, sort of lack of um, support you've received and so on, etc., etc. The only functional way of doing business would be to put forth the best proposal, proposed deal, and if nothing can be decided, that would be the one they go because they both agree that they can't have no deal. And then you could just get them, you could, you could actually manipulate them. Just so, look, so you both, so we, I agree that we should have no, there shouldn't be a no deal. You agree we shouldn't be a no deal. Is that correct? And they say, yes. <laughs> and then they just say, well, that's fine because you'll get, we can only work to an ultimatum here. If we have to have a deal and we have a deadline, we've got to go with this one. This is the choice. And it's probably, I can't know the difference between the deals. What's so big and, you know, uh, and there's money men and people getting uh, manipulated financially and uh, their, their favouritism is for the, the Europe um, people to make, make all the money basically. People getting backhanders. It's not, um, see, just see how they behave tells you a lot. There's lots of weird stuff going on. But that's, anyway, that's one thing. Um, OMADs, I'm still doing my one a day, uh, meal a day. And um, um, yeah, it's it's good, but you have to be very aware of your emotional state. Emotions might be high. It's like I'm a little bit gun ho. I got this manager. My manager tried to contact me, and she couldn't get through to me. And um, so what happened was um, I because I couldn't have a signal on my phone yesterday, so I thought, oh, it could be an emergency or something. So I phoned her back. But the thing is, in my head, I thought, well, it's just bad news. I'm gonna, you know, someone complained about me. They automatically assumed it was, it was something quite bad. But it wasn't. She seemed quite relaxed, actually. She seemed pleased to hear my voice. And, um, and there wasn't that stressors. But there's str I think it's past experience. It's um, post-traumatic stress, um, just syndrome or disorder, it's, it's where you've been drilled in. I mean, if you've ever gone off work through depression, someone's broken, broken your psyche, that's what they've done, they've damaged your psyche. Because they've put you on such a, they've put you on a spot, they've put you on some weird pedestal, negative pedestal, and then they've, they've, they've taken you in a such a way that you've, they've sort of emotionally damaged you. So they made you feel like you're responsible for this, this is why it's gone wrong, you must correct it, and you've put in more energy than you need to. And as a result, you've drained yourself and you've a mess, you've basically merged yourself with a problem, and you're not the problem. You're not work itself, you're a, you might be a worker. So that's where that kind of thing happens. And as a result, you might have a psychological scar. So when you're under stress or you're feeling stressed, and it could be because the OMAD is, is a type of stress, you know, it's, it's asking you to um, find better ways to cope. It's telling your body, this is a problem, are you going to solve it? And they say, well, we're going to, yeah, we're going to try to burn more fat, we're going to do this, we'll do that. And so the body has to get on and do it, start communicating better with each other. And if it hasn't done it for a long time, then there's going to be that initial issue that the organs are out of sync. Like your, how your thyroid operates and how your liver's operating and uh, your pancreas. So it's interesting. I mean, people with really good pancreases can uh, are sometimes the sweet teeth. Um, you gonna stop? Thank you. Um, <laughs> but it could be just a bit. Of, I don't want to be too bitey. I mean, I did have some like insane thoughts. I thought you can't do that. It's it wasn't me. Put it that way. It's um. Yeah, it's capacity to do harm, but it's it's not the will to do harm. So what happens is you get a visual thought of what you could do in a situation if it went if it if you felt a particular way or it went that bad. But you you, you look at it and you think, oh, that's that's a kind of very dark thought. But it doesn't mean you're actually going to do it. What your brain's saying is saying, this is what we could do. What do you think? And then you can say, well, no, because that was that's insane. You know, you, you'll get um, you get arrested or something. You know, you can't, um, can't push someone's face into their dinner and or cut their hair off or something. Some sort of thought, and that was just because somebody was being a being a, a right cow that I'm dealing with. And um, 
I'm ignoring it, but it's like a Cinderella type thing situation whereby because I'm there to do a, a job, I, they're not rude, they're not abusive in that way. They're just um, a strong narcissism from from the um, from a client who's got um, a bit of dementia and the daughter's has has a um, issue around confidence and. Um, Self-esteem, I'd say. She's quite shy and introverted, which isn't a problem. You could be an introvert, it's fine. But she's more likely to go and write a complaint in to my boss. And for some reason that came into my head and I thought, well, you fuck it. You know, would... I, I was just thinking to say to my boss, I said, look, should I, should I, you know, do you want me to say something directly to her? Because if she's going to start complaining about things, I'd rather hear it direct, then I can do something about it. But that it wasn't, it, it, it didn't even exist, this situation, this scenario is pure paranoia. And I was aware of that, because the dialogue is like, these thoughts come in, I think, no, and, and what I did is do a bit of the old, um, bit of me old yoga, which is quiet the mind, and listen to the body, and just feel where your heart is, and feel where your third eye is up on your head. If you can feel these things, then you can basically relax and tune into your, your sort of spirit self as well. And the other thing is focusing on the stomach. I've been trying to do like um, a stomach for me yoga. Maybe that's why I feel a bit more confident in that way, because the stomach controls that. But it's quite easy just to focus on that, on your stomach and uh, channel that. So, yeah. Uh, anything else? I'm doing my project Redwood. Um, so I've ordered myself uh, 30 Redwood seeds. So I have to see what the plan is. You can bonsai them. You can grow one of these, in the big old Redwoods. You can grow one and bonsai it in a pot. And it will only grow depending on its roots, how, ex how far it expands. It might be a tall tree, but it has potential to go further than that. So uh, the plan is to start growing these little um, little trees and then plant them into uh, areas where there may be like near a, near a floodplain, they can draw a lot of the ex excess water out. I mean, it's maybe not so great if, you, if you've got a situation whereby the, it's a lot of drought in that area, but if it's a well-known floodplain it's not going to be a problem. And the, the purpose of that is that you can drink a lot of the fluid, a lot of the, and also also um, offer protection for wildlife and stuff like that. So that'd be a really interesting project. Um, so we'll see. And it's a bit of this fairy domain. I think the fairies want me to do things like that. Which sounds a bit odd to somebody who just think, oh, it's fairies it's gone from Brexit to fairies. Uh, there's like a consciousness to plants, and so there's a kind of um, Sometimes we think of builders in the universe, you know, things that are the architects, and these kind of fall as a part of it. They're kind of integrated with the life force of plants, but also exist in a sort of this quantum realm. And so, if you're proving, if you're improving the connection they've got with these particular plants and consciousness then they, in essence, could help you. They are very aware of your thoughts, though, so you've got to be quite honest and open. They can read your heart, basically. And, um, yeah, you could put a bonsai and make a fairy-type altar. So the plant, there's some um, uh, blood magic you can become aware of, and if you use put your blood on the seed um, before it germinates, you make a... Um, binding, it's a binding to their life force. And so as the tree grows, you probably can increase your chi as well. You're able to connect. There's a few other ways you can do that as well. This is Anastasia method. Because I've got this one of these books that's quite interesting. And it has a lot of sort of like um, what some people would do. Well it's more um, a bit of Wiccan pagan type stuff in there as well. And she says about um, putting a seed in your mouth and putting it to the roof of your mouth and let your saliva keep it warm, keep it in there for, I don't know, a few minutes and then that'll be there for, for germination. 
I mean, it could be possible that you could use your own murine to um, get some seeds going. They're, because it's supposedly slightly acidic, so when it's watered down, you can use it on the plants. But when it's in a more concentrated form, it might help break down the seed. So there's a port as well. Um, getting your body fluids. And it's creating a kind of bond to this plant. That's the main thing. So that's another way. You just want to kind of use them as batteries and energy connectors to them energy. And a stronger connection of the plant, the stronger you have with the fairy realm. I think that's quite important. So I just. And also Meditown plants, I haven't really Meditown apples. You've got to say in an altar, like you've got this like, uh, double tree bonsai type tree growing crystals around here. And some other things you can do. Um, it's the magic, really. I may have to look at some other things. I've done with the stuff with the organ. The organ wasn't that impressive, the water organ. Maybe I need to put something like um, salt water would be good. Uh, where you get the water from is good. You can get spiritual connection there. So if I went to a, a lake and I filled up the bottle, I put some what we call like charmed items in the bottle and sealed it. And you got that kind of you can meditate on it and that help spiritual got connect to the lake. Could be seawater in it. Yeah, but you do need to mark a bottle though, put a big bottle. Mark it that it's, it's not to drink. Um, or poison, or poison thing like that. You don't want people taking a swig out of um, some seawater or something else you put together. <coughs> so, um, sand maybe, sand in the bottle. Yeah, a little bottle. There's um, some other stuff as well. There's these um, demonic boxes and things. I can construct something like that. What you do is in the box you have a mirror, and you have, might have more than one mirror, and they act as a portal. And when the box, you, you close the box, you must keep the box closed during daylight time. And if you meditate and then you ask it to come into there, it will stay in the box. If um, and then you can close the mirror dimensionally, but to be honest, the entities can come out of the box, they're not stuck by the box. But they, um, I think it just drains their strength, daylight does. Because they're just at a different frequency, it like pushes them out dimensionally. And, um, and then what you can do is when it's dark, then you can, uh, you can get that entity out of the box if you wanted to, or communicate with it or something. But it feels like it's got a safe a safe house. But what you don't do is don't hurt the entity. Like if you've got the entity there and you feel that its presence is in the box, you wouldn't walk out to the sunlight, bright sunlight with it in there, and then blast it of sunlight. What might happen is you might get a bit of a bad, you might get a bit of a, a bit of a curse going on or something. You might have some bad luck carry you away because your intentions were were harmful. But most people would have these intentions way before they even done that. Unless they've got a skill to blank, blank their mind, um, but they, don't, they don't think about it. There's ways people can do that. Um, discharge any sort of emotional attachment. But yeah, these are kind of, um, if they want these people want these demon boxes. But then what are they summoning up? That's the thing, what, what do they want? I mean, there are those dark spirits out there. They're um, different to to the human realm, there's some weird ones, they're just sort of like observing us or they're interested in our emotions or something like that because they're not, they don't have them in the same way so it's cu purely curiosity and I'm not too sure what they're feeding back maybe they're looking for maybe they're looking for something a, an awakening in our species they're looking for something that goes way beyond where we are now So. Because they may not be controlled by time as well, maybe they've seen a future where we go through a massive change and they're observing the changes and stuff like that. I don't think they're holding us back, they just seem curious. I think they've been helping us as well. 
a bit like he's the fairy altar that sort of comes to my head um, via some other sort of spiritual roots, I guess. I guess sort of guides or something like that. It just feels like a connection. You, when you relax your mind, you're not looking for a particular way to access it. It's just there. So, um, there's some other stuff, like I could have sand in a bottle, we can use, um, because people use stuff like salt, you can use, um, the sand could be used, I think where it's from might be quite important. So I wonder if we can get sand from a particular country. Yeah, it's a type of earth magic, and then you can summon from it. So maybe this kind of gin stuff would be pretty cool. I'd have to, I mean, kind of, so I probably mentioned this before in one of my other videos. Um, so when I was a very small child, one of my first memories that sort of burnt into my mind was I was in a cot, so I must have been maybe two, and I don't think I, it just felt like I started becoming very conscious, you know, because like, I can remember the taste of wood on the bars of the, of the cot. And it has that texture on your tongue as well. But I felt like there was something in the room. Something in the room got my attention as a small boy. And so I clambered, so I must have been young because I could feel the kind of, I couldn't stand up properly, but I was clambering up on the bars. And um, there was some type of shadow. And I looked at it and I didn't make any sense at first. But then I realized it looked like the silhouette of a person. And so I was trying to match the silhouette of, that, of the shadow to a person, and then I realised that, that the the actual person is the shadow, and it's when I realised it was there, and I think it, it realised I was conscious of it, it moved. Now this entity's been at this, well it's been at my parents' house since they moved in really. It used to be um, a craft room before I was born, and um, my mum used to do um, used to do sewing and knitting and all sorts of things in it. So she might have done things that were created that had something interesting in her anyway. The house was, wasn't owned by anyone else. The land was on a, an old lake. There's an under, underwater river or stream that runs parallel to the house. It's under the house. So where that, how far deep that goes underground, I don't know. But that might be the, kind of like the doorway to um, to this like never realm. Anyway, this, this entity's come, it, maybe it's female. But she said, my mum said she felt like she's been watched on occasions and kind of had sort of um, some dark thoughts come to her. So this entity was, has been watching her for a while. And um, so, because I've talked about it in future sort of time, you know, that it's some shadow. And um, on occasion I felt the presence of this, this shadowy shadow being. And it's been throughout my life, I think it's female, I think it's possibly gin. It's connected to maybe a family of them now. I've had in more recent times when I've sort of been dreaming and I've seen, in the dream I've turned around and there's been all these dark figures behind me. And um, I can feel like they're there, you know, engaging, I can feel them in my psyche. I think because if, if you're kind of switched on spiritually, there's a, you're conscious in more than one way. You're not just physically conscious of your, what your body feels like. But you're kind of conscious of what enters your imagination as well. And your, imagine, your imagination is just like in the universe. So that's how that works. So it was, yeah, just spooky times. And so these entities have kind of toyed and played around me. There's been more than one there. And I think it's because they, they kind of leave their own um, tracks. So if they keep entering your world, they leave their own mark. And, other entities are aware of it. And so there's always been a kind of rich bit of paranormal. Not so much now. I think I've just gone tired of work and stuff. It also is a part of you can, like reaching out in a paranormal sense. You meditate on them, they take an interest in you. It's a, one of these type of relationships. That the more if you invest in them, they invest in you. You know. What, what the validation they see in you, they can read your thoughts, you can sense theirs, and you start seeing things actually. You might have a, a flash on image, you might see something like here underground or in a cave. 
because they've, they've connected themselves to you, so they've, they've taken an interest in you. And I just don't know what it is for. It could even be that this, this entity is like a reaper. So when I do pass my clogs, it, it might be um, looking for some payback or something. But I don't think it's got any, anything harmful for me. It's just like an interest. And then there's also been, yeah, to be honest, there's been things happen to people when they've had bad will against me, I guess. Because their intentions have been wrecked and the entity hasn't always agreed with it or is, is reacting in its own way. And I don't know whether it was there or it's not. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I think about it and it's there because it's not limited to space or time in some way. So that's, that's where I draw some of my knowledge from. So I don't know if it's a guide, I don't, I haven't really had been able to have a, a conversation with it. I mean, I might. There's some stuff I'd like to resolve. As I mentioned, if I could get myself into a, a deep trance state and find out what's there. But what I don't, what, what I do, don't want to do is, is be in a situation whereby what I pull out is something I fabricated, you know, because I desperately wanted information. So there's a few things like, um, you know, alien encounters, um, that sort of odd piece of entity, the entity when I was a small boy, I saw this entity come up the stairs. I'd like to know. I'd like to know what I actually saw that night, you know. Why? Because I've got passed out. I barricaded a door, and and I passed. I eventually fell asleep and passed out. And then there was a weird laser type noise, and it was scanning through the wall. Or what? I mean, it's one of these that runs in families, and I'm more aware of it now. There's some genetic reasons too. Because my mum's parents um, both blue-eyed, and so she was born with green eyes. And um, she's also O negative blood type or something like that. And for her children, we don't have the O negative, but she did have something to. Um, she was given something to to uh, basically what's it to do? reduce her um, immune system response, so that we're not uh, afraid of being miscarried or something like that. I'm sure this was quite interesting to some entities, like, oh, there's a genetic variant that's changed. And the actual children are between these two, two kind of bloodlines um, that are opposites to each other, so which, you know, wouldn't really exist. Uh, well, it do exist, it's just a more difficult combination. So that's that. I'm trying to think of anything else on the spiritual stuff to get into. Um, so anyway, yes, yeah, so that's, that's where I draw my knowledge. I think gym magic, you can use a bit like salt, and you can use the sand, and um, you can do like little sand um, shapes. You can scribe into it, and a bit like reading tea leaves and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's a big side off band. Speak to you soon.